Good morning. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be learning just Yud Tes Amud Aleph to get us ready for Shabbos uh, due to all of my travels this week, which made the learning complicated. <clears throat> and we're starting about five lines, six lines uh, from the top of Daf Yud Tes Amud Aleph. And the Gemara starts with a question. If I have an Ama Ibria, am I allowed to take that Ama Ibria if I've never married her and marry her off to my son? Is that allowed? Do we say bino amar rachmana? The pasuk says bino in regards to the pasuk beim livno yi adena b'mishpat abanos ya aselo. So if he's bino, then bino kolde who maybe he could be a son of any age, and therefore I can marry off my amo ha'ivria to my son. O dilma bino dum yadide. Or when we say bino, does it mean he's my son? Yes, but he's not a child. Mahu gadol af bino gadol. So that's our question for today: Is do we know? whether or not a father is allowed to marry off an Amma Ibriya to his son, if that son is a Katan, or does he even have to be a Gadol? So the Gemara tries an attempt to learn from another place. Amr Abzeira, a quarter of the way down on your test, Medal of Toshma, Ish, Prat le Katan, in regards to the, the to the word Ish, which is based on the Pasuk of the Ish Asher Yinaf as Eshes Ish, we're talking about the Isser of Eshes Ish of cheating. So the Gemara says, Prat le katan is that if the iser happened with a katan, then it's that's not your classical iser of eshes ish. And asher yinaf es eshes ish prat le eshes katan. The same is true in regards to someone who's mizana with an uh, with a katan's wife. That's also not typical. So maybe we should say vi amris miyayid. If in fact there is yud im kain matzinu ishus le katan. If you say in our case that an amah ivria is allowed to marry a child who's a katan, that seems to imply that there's ishus that there is marriage by a katan. But that doesn't make sense because if there is ishus by a katan, then why is it that by the psukim of ish and asher yinafes eshes ish, where we excluded a katan from typical marriage? Why would that make sense? These two worlds don't don't work. So says the Gemara of Elamai. What's the other option? You want to say enomiyayid? You want to say that if a father takes an ama ibria and marries off the ama ibria to a katan, it would not work. If that's then true, amai come and lekra. We have psukim already that discuss this. So why? How do we? How do we fix all of these conflicting reports? We have the world of Ashesish, where we treat a katan and the wife of a katan as different than typical marriage. And we have the case of Yud, which seems to work even with a katan. How do we get these two worlds to work? So says the Gemara, Amai kam emai lakra, tif shot minad miyad. It seems from the psukim that there should be Yud, and this is our stira. The Gemara responds, Amaravashi, I can explain everything for you. He says, don't worry. Hacha, what are we talking about over here in regards to Yud? We're talking about a case scenario, I'm sorry, in regards to Eshesish. Says the Gemara, um, what we're talking about is when there's a Yavam who's nine years old in one day, who is Ba al Yavimto, who uh, is with his Yavama. There, on the one hand, Midoraisa Chazile, his Bia is considered a Bia as it relates to the world of Tash Meshamita, but Maudetema, Kevan Midoraisa Chazile, Ubi Asobia. That since when he's nine years old, his bia is actually a bia. Haba aleha vischai ve'eshes ish kamash malan. That had that nine-year-old been with a woman who was older, that that would be classical eshes ish. No, it's not. And we're speaking about a specific ukimta. And the Misa, we don't really have clarity on the halacha of yud because we've only explained what the case was in regards to eshes ish. So what do we do? My have Allah. How do we paskin in regards to the yud? Says the Gemara halfway down. Toshma Amar of Ivo Amar of Yanai. Ein yud ela begadol, ein yud ela midas. He says two things. Number one is that there is no yud um, unless the person is a gadol. A man who's never married his ama ibria can marry off his ama ibria to a child, provided that that child is a gadol. Uh, however, there's a second rule, which is ein yud ela midas. Yud can only happen with das. The Gemara says those two things sound extremely similar. Tarte, why did you have to say both lines, Rav Yanai? Why did you have to say that we only allow Yud with a Gadol and we only allow Yud Midas? Says the Gemara, Matam Kamar. It's really two parts of the same thing. Matam ain Yud al Gadol. What's the reason why we only allow for Yud with a child who's a Gadol? Because of Isha ain Yud al Midas, says the Gemara beautifully. They are two uh, sides of the same coin. And the halacha is that if a man has an Amma Ibrah that he has never married, 
he is allowed to marry off the Amma Ibriya to his child, provided that the child is himself a Gado, who is, by definition, a Bardas. Vi Baisema, there's actually another reason as to why uh, Raviana used this double language that ain't yud ela begodol and ain't yud ela midas. We buy sema my midas, midas dido. She has to know about it. The tani abaye bereid Rabbi Abo, asher lo yada melamed should tzarich lida with dalid ayin yud. That's a correction in the text here. Lida that she needs to know. In other words, the word yada in the pasuk is being used for a drasha of the word das. And on that same note, who Tani Lab, who Amarla, he said about this Bikdushe Yud that this Pasuk was talking about Yud, Valiba de Rab Yosi Brebihuda, in accordance with the Shita of Rab Yosi Brebihuda. The Amar, what did he say? Rab Yosi Brebihuda was of the opinion that Mos Harishonos love the Kiddushin Nisu. That when a man gives money to purchase an Amahiria, that money is not money that is for Kiddushin. The Amar, Mos Rishon Lab Kiddushin Nisu, and Rab Nachman Ritzla Kamar, no, that's not correct. I could even say the other opinion, the opinion that's not like um, Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda. What does Rav Nachman Yitzchak say? Even if you want to say that the money that I give to purchase the Amma Ivriya is valid for Kedushin, Shaini Hacha, our case is different, even though typically it should work, but in this case it doesn't work. And uh, because of that, we even if it were to be the case that in general we assumed that the money that was given to purchase the Amma Ibriya is for Kedushin. It wouldn't work here because of the Pasuk. My Reb Yossi, Reb Yehuda. What is this seemingly elusive sheet of Reb Yossi, Reb Yehuda? We had it in yesterday's blot, which was a complicated blot, and we have it here as well. Says the Gemara, two lines before the wide lines, and we'll be stopping in about five lines. Titania, the Brisa writes, Ya'ada and Vehefta. Tzarech she'yehe shehus bayom k'day pidiya. That if a man is going to want to marry his Amma Ha'ibriya, there has to be enough time for her to get freed during daylight hours. Mikan, what does this mean? From here we see, Amr of Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda, im ye shehus bayom k'day laso simo shabba pruta, if there's still enough time in the day for her to do work that's valued at a shabba pruta, mekudashas, then she'd be halachically married. Im lav, and if there isn't enough time, then ena mekudashas. Alma, what do we see from here? Kasava, Reb Yosi, Reb Yehuda, must hold that most harishonos lav lekidushin nitnu, that the initial monies that a man used to purchase Nama Ibria is not sufficient to create kedushin. We need her to stop, to end that, and then do a Shabbat Pruta's worth of work. That would, the Shabbat Pruta is what marries her, but it's not the monies that were given over to purchase the Amma Ibria. What about the dissenting opinion? Three lines into the wide lines. And with this, we'll stop. Rav Nachman bar Yitzchak Omar, even if you want to say that the money that was being used to purchase the Amha Ivriya um, does count for Kedushin, but Shani Hacha, the Dama Rachman of Evda, the Psukim here are different, um, and uh, the Psukim here require of us that there be a separate Kedushin, and therefore the money that was used for the purchasing of the Amha Ivriya will not count. We'll stop right here. We're going to pick up Emir Tashem on Shabbos at the bottom of Yud Testament Aleph, five, six lines from the bottom of the two dots, starting with the words, Omar Rava, Omar Rav Nachman, wishing you all beautiful Shabbos.